Hi, my name is Maxim M. Martineau, and I am the young adult fantasy author of Kingdom of Exile. Kingdom of Exiles features uh, Lena, who is a beast charmer. And in that world, that means she has the ability to tame magical creatures, which she can then store in an alternate realm, kind of like a sanctuary where they just get to live out their days free and happy. And then if she ever needs their help or their assistance, she can call on them and they will come to her aid. Now, Lena was wrongly exiled from her community um, for a crime she did not commit. And so she's forced to sell her creatures on the black market in order to survive. It's very heartbreaking work for her. She tries her best to only give creatures to people that she deems fit, whether she thinks the creature can outsmart that person or if they're just a nice person and they deserve a creature of a certain caliber, and then she'll go ahead and sell them to them. But of course, this activity is still considered illegal in the eyes of her people. So when they find out she's doing this, even though she has no other means for work, they place a bounty on her head, which causes Nock, the other main male character, to enter the story. And he is the leader of an assassin's guild called Kruer, and every assassin who's a member of this guild is actually undead. They died and then they were raised and have the ability to walk with the shadows and control them for weapons and like sneaky kind of attacks and you know, all the kind of stuff you'd expect an assassin with magical powers. He barters with her and in exchange for the contract on her head, he asks for, or demands rather, four magical creatures, one for him and each of his closest friends. And Lena, hesitantly, but really she has no other option, agrees. She knows she can't overpower them. She can't outmaneuver them. I mean, they can walk with the shadows and kind of just pop up behind her and kill her. So she's kind of at their beck and call, but, what she is not letting on is that she also needs something from the assassins in order to tame a creature that she wants to prove her innocence to her people. So the rest of the book continues with Nock, Lena, and his three closest friends on this magical beast hunt across the country as both Nock and Lena are trying to outmaneuver each other to get what they want from each other. Because in the back of Nock's mind, he's still planning on capitalizing on the bounty. He's gonna get the beast, get the contract, make out for everyone in his family, not just his closest friends. So, but as close proximity tends to do, feelings start to develop and they start to question what's right and wrong and the truth behind her bounty and why her people are so focused on removing her from the picture. And then what is Nock's curse? Like, why is it so hard for him to get rid of? Like, what is it? Like, I really hope y'all like those kind of epic journey vibes because that's what goes on here. They literally go on a beast hunt and there are so many beasts. There are at least 25 roughly, I wanna say, in the first book alone. And the really cool thing is every beast that's mentioned in the book actually appears in the bestiary, which on Lena is a necklace that she wears around her neck, but in the actual book itself, there's an appendix at the back that has a pronunciation guide uh, taming requirements, descriptions, and even some artist renditions of a few of the beasts in the book, which is really cool because then you get the visual aspect of what I'm envisioning when I write it, as well as just like all the different requirements and the magic system that goes into taming each individual creature. Book two is a lot about him and his backstory and how he got to be where he is in Kingdom of Exiles, so I won't spoil it too much, um, but I really, really, really look forward to y'all reading especially book two.